Okay, let's talk about border radius. This is a great, powerful CSS property, but uh, can sometimes be a little bit confusing in the syntax. All right, I have a box here. This is my H1 element. The background color is white. Um, the border radius property allows me to round the corners here. If I put one number, this number is going to be used for all four corners. Oops, that's the key. So there we are. Now, what this means is, if you were to draw a square that is 20 pixels by 20 pixels, that middle point right here, the far corner away from this outside edge, this corner right here, this is the 20 pixel by 20 pixel square, and that point would be the center of a circle that would be drawn here. And that's what this 20 px means. So I'm drawing a circle and it's cutting off the edge here. Background color, background image, anything inside here is going to be truncated. The border, if you add a border, it will follow this curve. So if I was to come in and say border one pixel solid red, there we are. It follows that curve. So that's what we're doing is we're creating a little square here, 20 pixels by 20 pixels, and that point is the center of this circle. Now what if I put two values? Well, if you add two values, let's do a 20 pixel and a 40 pixel, you can see that the radius is different. This gets used for the first, which is the top left, and then its opposite, the bottom right. These two are getting the 20 pixel, and the 40 pixel is applied to both of these. Just like the border property, or padding, or margin, if you give two values, the first and the third values are going to be this. If I add three, then I'm going to get the first top left corner. This one's going to be the top right corner. This one's going to be the bottom right corner. And then 20 pixels will be used again for the final value. It's opposite. If you put four values, then you're describing what's going to happen in all four. Okay, that's fairly straightforward. But what if I want to, I'll just put this up here as an example. What if I want to use two different values? What if I don't want a perfect circle? So here's the 10, 20, 30, 40. What if I don't want a perfect circle? What if I want something to kind of slope down a little bit like that? Well, in that case, we can use this, the slash in between. So I'm going to go back to 10 pixels everywhere. This is going to be used, remember, with all CSS properties, we've got horizontal first, then vertical. So this is going to be my horizontal value. So 10 pixels tall, uh, sorry, horizontal, wide, <laughs> 10 pixels wide, and let's say, actually, let's make it 20, make it a little bit more visible on the screen, and then 100 pixels vertical. Okay, this is the opposite. There's the hundreds. Now, if I put the slash in between, what I'm saying is all four are going to get the 20 pixels on the horizontal, and all four are going to get the 100 on the vertical, like that. So, this is very narrow, but very tall. A 20 pixel by 100 pixel rectangle, and this becomes the center point for this rectangle. So if I was to do a 100 pixel by 100 pixel square, it would be much bigger and the radius would be here, so this would be a much bigger circle. And that's what this line is following. But this one is using the little 10 pixel square. So it is a much smaller curve. And all four sides get this. If I wanted to do different values, Let's do 50 pixel, yeah. So this one's getting 20, 30, 40, 50 as the horizontal values. So it's curving in more, curving inward further each time. But all four of them are getting 100 pixels. Or I could say two of them get 200, one of them gets 100. So this one is getting 20 pixel for the horizontal and 100 for the vertical. The second one gets 30 pixels for the horizontal and 200 for the vertical. 
third one gets 40 pixels for the horizontal, but the vertical is back to 100 because I have two values, so this is used for the first and the third. And the final one gets 50 pixels, 200 pixels. 50 pixel horizontal, 200 pixel vertical. Okay, so you can create any combination you want of all these different things. I've left little examples of all of them. If you want to write out each of the corners yourself as separate properties to make it a little bit clearer for yourself, feel free to go ahead and do that. Here's the four different values. Border top left radius, border bottom left radius, border bottom right radius, border top right radius. Those are the four individual properties if you want to put one or two values on each one. Or this is the shorthand syntax, just border radius, and this is how it works. And I left a little example here. This is straight from the MDN website, the Mozilla Developer Network. This is how this translates into these values. So you can use that as a reference. But remember, it's always horizontal, then vertical. All right. Hope that helps you out. Hope you create some cool borders. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the bottom. And as always, thanks for watching.